barely a week since the 16% value-added tax came into implementation and Kenyans are already feeling the pinch. The latest of the beta bites is the reported countrywide fuel shortage in the country. Well, our reporter Abu Bakr Abdullahi Alia spoke to the management at a patrol station in Nairobi's Hallingham area and let's listen in on that. The pain at the pump continues as the pinch is felt further with reports of fuel shortages across the country reported and joining me now to discuss further on that is a local supervisor at a petrol station here at Hallingham, uh, Geoffrey. Geoffrey, thanks for talking to us here on KTN. To start us off, how has the market responded to the increase in the prices of fuel? Okay, definitely that now, uh, I think this was impl implemented on Sunday and uh, as a as at now, from today, I can say that uh, we have been facing uh, just uh, some challenges like whereby on Sunday the number of customers had reduced to a high rate, but as at now we are seeing customers. But I think the contribution to this is we have been shortages at some of our stations. If you are to give us a percentage drop in, the, in terms of customers, what will it be? Okay, I can say from Sunday to yesterday, we had a drop of about like 30%. But that now we are seeing a pile of customers coming, but they are claiming though the prices have hiked, they are a bit high, but they are saying they have to fuel since they, there is no fuel in Nairobi and they have to travel. Uh, what about buying fuel from the depot? How, how has that also changed? Okay, that one also has affected us greatly. Since uh, as at now, like this station, we see that we don't, we don't have diesel supply, and this has been affected by the citizens of Kenyans, whereby they are claiming that there would be no supply of fuel since the, the prices are too high for them, yeah, and they cannot afford it. There's often the idea that it's also the petrol stations that do not want to buy fuel. Uh, how, how true is that? Okay, uh, that one I cannot talk about it. Since uh, in our station, we are ready to buy fuel and sell since uh, we have to serve Kenyans. Our job is to serve Kenyans, yeah. So, so what is your message probably to the Energy Regulatory Commission and, and those in charge in the energy sector? Okay, my message to the energy, the, the ERC, I can just urge them to check on this because actually it's affecting each and every one of us. Yeah. Geoffrey, thanks for talking to us. Of course, there, Geoffrey, an attendant, rather, supervisor here at Total along Hallingham, telling us about how the numbers have reduced and also the buying abilities of individual petrol stations from, of buying fuel from uh, uh, depots has also reduced. This means definitely that it will have a shortage uh, effect on, on the petrols that is supplied across the country. I'm Abubakar Abdullahi for KTN News. Well, many thanks, Abu Bakr, for just uh, giving us some context on what's happening in the country. Let me now bring in Paul Maimba, who is joining us via phone. And uh, he is the former chairman of the Petroleum Institute of East Africa. And uh, good afternoon, Powell. Just give us the latest on this developing story where we are getting reports that uh, a number of petrol stations do not have stocks. What is not happening? Hi, Abi. Good afternoon. And good afternoon to the viewers and listeners. Yes, uh, the, the latest is that the situation hasn't improved because the loadings are out of the terminals, both Nairobi and uh, uh, Western Kenya and Konza, that situation hasn't changed. The trucks are unable to leave the terminals due to the reasons that um, uh, the independent petroleum dealers have actually parked trucks on the entrances and exits of the terminals. So... For that reason, they, they, there's no one who is able to leave the terminals to, to supply fuel to the, to the feeding stations as of now. Uh, how will this uh, eventually uh, sort of be resolved now that, uh, of course, you also have the latest development around uh, the value-added tax of 16%? And uh, what way forward on this? Well, I think the way, the way forward on this one is purely discussion. Um, uh, when the conversations uh, between the players in the industry, the government, and of course the parliament, and, and of course ultimately it's going to go to the president, whether to sign or not sign what the industry has proposed. So through this process, we may end up coming up with this resolution. Um, at the moment, it's a real cost, which you will have to be uh, borne by the players in the industry. And of course, they have to find additional working capital 
to run their businesses. And that's the reason why uh, you find there's a bit of uh, a standoff for now until uh, the discussions, formal discussions take place. And, of course, the president comes in, um, appends to the bill that parliament has, has proposed. And, uh, Powell, in terms of losses incurred today by just uh, fuel s- stockouts happening in the country, can we quantify how much you've lost as a country? Well, as a country, it's, it's, a, bigger, it's a bigger loss. So you have the direct loss for, for, for the industry as a whole for not trading. Um, there are costs which don't stop, whether you sell or you don't sell. Those costs will continue running. Uh, the second one is economic loss, which um, uh, the activities the country has been put on standstill as as we speak now. People are to travel, or people are to do certain productive activities. All that has been put on hold until the situation is resolved. So, if we are to think about uh, how uh, this is affecting the economy, it's quite significant. And and I guess we'll have to move a bit faster to resolve the problem so that the economy doesn't find itself into a more uh, challenging situation. We're already facing some, some headwinds, and, and this just adds to that problem. All right. And, uh, Powell, looking at this uh, controversial tax, and, uh, of course, the president uh, is yet to jet back from uh, Beijing, China. And uh, from an industry perspective, was it the right move to take as much as the government is looking to raise taxes? Well, Abby, you know, this is not like that has happened today. Uh, the act was passed in 2013, and it's, it has been there. I, I, I think pro- the problem we are facing now is purely sensitization over the period when the bill was, was suspended. Uh, as you know, it has been suspended twice, and this is, if it gets suspended, it will be the third time. And, and we can't continue suspending it because... Um, the first thing is that the, minister, the, 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 the Treasury put up a budget which took into consideration the revenues that will come through the VAT. And now that if the VAT doesn't kick in, it means there will be a hole in the budget. And therefore, the Treasury and the government as a whole has to find money or cut certain projects which should have been funded through the VAT collection. Now, where before the VAT was introduced, what should have happened probably now was the sensitization running towards the 16 percent to the public and everybody else and thereafter probably people would have been psychologically prepared and the other reason is probably passing the whole 16 percent at at once may not may have a higher shock into the society so staggering the 16 percent could be another option of saying let's reduce the rate now and move it over the next three to four years until it reaches the target so there are a number of options which can be looked at um, but postponing it 100 percent again uh, we'll have exactly the same situation that we're facing now two years and it will be closer to 2022 elections so you may be guaranteed that it will go through exactly the same thing for the fourth or fifth time or else we just forget about VAT on, on petroleum products and, and move on. All right. Many thanks, uh, Paul Maimba, former chairman of the Petroleum Institute of East Africa, just uh, giving us his remarks on this developing story around a fuel shortage in the country. And, of course, uh, we continue to train our cameras, cameras across the various stations across the country as we bring